explosion of New Orleans creativity. And as Tim said, after a while, the Mardi Gras mentality and, you know, a little bit too uh, sanguine, you can see the pictures on the walls of uh, this uh, building here, mayors who didn't quite, you know, focus on uh, what was needed to keep the city entrepreneurial. There was somewhat of a great decline in New Orleans. There was also a problem in New Orleans, which is that it began to do something that the city had never done before, which is sort of segregate itself a bit. People moved down into suburbs for a variety of reasons. The Corps of Engineers built levees, or they thought they built levees. You know, so that Lakeview and Lower Nine and New Orleans East could all uh, spring up. The interstate highways were built. A variety of things came together starting in the uh, 40s and then after the war particularly escalating in the 50s and 60s. So the town spread out and somewhat uh, spread out in a way that we lost the core experience, we lost a little bit of the diversity of the city. Now there's very little good you can say about a hurricane, but all hurricanes have silver linings. Among other things, it brought the city back and made people like you come to the city. It also concentrated the city much more in the core footprint so that uh, places like Central City and uh, uh, Treme and others became actually more populated, not less populated. People came back, they haven't fully come back, but the influx of people back to the city were people who really cared. People who felt they were part of something larger, something that they could build. And it made us understand something very important, which is all of us in this city are in the same boat. When the levees break, we're all in the same boat together. We have to work together. And I think there was a new spirit that came in the wake of the hurricane. And in some ways, that was the third great revival of New Orleans entrepreneurship and of creativity. I was part of a chairman of Teach for America right after the storm was down here. We had 250 core members, uh, Sheridan Hotel on Canal Street, one of the few hotels that were open a couple weeks after the storm. There was no school system. So we said to them, all right, since you're not going to get paid, there's no school system. We give you a little bit of a stipend if you want to just stick around in New Orleans, or we'll place you in Baton Rouge or Houston or the Delta Country of Mississippi. Uh, so you can either, you know, go and be placed in another school district, or you can stay here in New Orleans and we'll see what happens, but you're not going to get a full pay. Of the 250 core members, 250 decided to stay in New Orleans. The following year there were 500. There was a sense of mission of let's reinvent a school system. I saw that sense of mission on the neighborhoods as well. I, the very week after the storm, I wrote something for Time Magazine about New Orleans and said, and I had been appointed to the Louisiana Recovery Authority, I was not somebody who believed you could have a plan that you could impose on the city. I said, the city will come back neighborhood by neighborhood because it is a city of neighborhoods. And indeed, uh, I think the best thing ever to happen to the planning process of this city was what I call the Green Dot Revolution which is when the Bring New Orleans Back Commission and others decided to do a map of the city, put green dots on certain neighborhoods that weren't going to be allowed to come back. They're going to revert to uh, wetland. My parents who are sitting there noticed a green dot right in the heart of Broadmoor. And in their front yard and on the neutral ground in Napoleon Avenue, whether it was Latoya, Cantrell, and others, there were just big rallies to bring Broadmoor back. Broadmoor has come back and it's a better neighborhood than it was before the storm. And I think it was that rallying of neighborhoods that also created a sense of mission uh, in New Orleans. And then what is particularly important about New Orleans is the connectivity of creativity to commerce. When I wrote about Steve Jobs, one of the first things he said to me was he said, I like to stand at the intersection of where the arts are meeting commerce where people with imagination and creativity are doing technology, engineering, and science. He said, because everything else is just a commodity, you know, it'll be done, uh, it'll be automated, but creativity will never be automated. 
So it's a connection of creativity to commerce, he said, is where the value will be created in the 21st century. There is no better place in New Orleans than to connect creativity to anything. Creativity to cooking, to fashion, but also to business, to websites, to new services, to new technologies and sciences. I think we've had four pillars of the economy in New Orleans. Three of them when I was growing up, which was the extraction industries like oil and gas and sulfur, tourism industry, the port of New Orleans. But there was something that was harder to define, which I sort of call the creativity industry. It was simply people who were very creative, whether they were making food or music or whatever, and connecting that creativity to businesses. And now what I think is happening is that creativity is being connected to entrepreneurship. I spend a lot of time in Silicon Valley, especially when I'm writing about Steve Jobs. And Silicon Valley is filled with really, really smart engineers. But there's something odd about really smart people. After a while, you realize there are a lot of them. And they're kind of a dime a dozen. And they often don't amount to much. It's the imaginative and creative people that actually amount to something. And you're starting to see a migration now, although Silicon Valley will always be important. But Silicon Valley is being chock full of engineers. It's already starting to migrate to San Francisco, also to New York, places like Austin, and now places like New Orleans, where there is a creativity industry and a creativity culture, not just an engineering and a smart uh, intellectual culture. And I think that is uh, the mark of what will be this new, the new Bienvilles, as you put it, the new entrepreneurs of New Orleans. Um, it was in August of 2011 when I went out to Palo Alto for, long, for the last long visit I had with Steve Jobs. And it was clear back then, that month, that he might not operate the cancer anymore. He was very sick and gross. So we talked about what is the meaning? You know, why are you doing it? And he said, you know, I've always thought about a purpose in life. And I realize that it's being part of something a little bit larger than yourself. That to me so resonates with New Orleans. Anybody who came here now came here because you wanted to be part of something a little bit larger than yourself. And he said to me, in history as in life, it's like a river. I thought of the river that I used to see from my apartment in Jackson Square all the time. He said, it's a big river. I learned that in my Buddhist training. And people put things into that river that are really useful, and you get to take them out of the river. You get to take out things that people created before you, new ways of doing business, ways of building up, ways of growing crops, ways of making clothes. All of those things you take out of the river the meaning of life is not how much you get to take out of the river, but how much you put back into the river. How much you put back into the river of life, the river of history, that people after you will be able to pull out and say, oh, that's cool. Somebody put that in. Somebody left that behind. Somebody created that. And I do think that if you wanted here in life to say, I only want to take, I only want to get. I'm not sure you decide to be an entrepreneur in New Orleans. But if you say, I want to connect creativity to everything I do, so that it'll be lasting, so it'll be like an iPhone that's insanely great, that people will be passionate about, that it's not just about making profits, but making products and services that people will say, whoa, I was lucky to be able to use that. That, to Steve, was the mark of real creativity, somebody who felt they were part of something larger than themselves. So I do hope, too, that if you become part of the great entrepreneur community, that will be this third wave of entrepreneurship and creativity in the city of New Orleans. That you remember, too, to be part of something larger than yourself, part of this community, part of the city, part of the diversity and the patchwork that Olmstead and Tocqueville have talked about, part of understanding the value of that diversity and patchwork, part of understanding why it's important to reinvent a school system, 
whether you get involved in Teach for America, in new schools in New Orleans, or Tulane University, whatever. Remember, there's ways of saying, not only am I going to try to be creative and successful, I'm going to make sure everybody in this crazy patchwork of a town, they too have that opportunity. I'm going to be part of that thing larger than ourselves. If that 